Just a few minutes ago, my office filed a lawsuit against the National Rifle Association to dissolve the organization in its entirety for years of self-dealing and illegal conduct that violate New York's charities law and undermine its own mission. Welcome back to American Agenda. New York Attorney General Letitia James there taking legal action to try to disband the NRA. She's accusing the pro-gun organization of brazen corruption and fraud, saying its leaders used millions of dollars in charitable donations for their own personal expenses. This includes things like lavish vacations, private jets, expensive meals. Even if these accusations are true, does James really have the legal authority to shut down the NRA? To weigh in, we welcome attorney for the National Legal and Policy Center, Paul Kaminar. Paul, do they have the right to do this? Well, uh, they do have a right to file such a suit, but they're clearly abusing their legal authority. Uh, let's put this in context. Back in 2018, uh, they went after insurance companies and banks saying not to do business with the NRA. Uh, and the NRA filed a suit uh, saying this is violating their First Amendment rights. And even the ACLU filed a brief on behalf of NRA, and they won. And what's happening here is that the attorney general is clearly using this as selective prosecution. Uh, they're using uh, uh, the death penalty, so to speak, when they were already in negotiations on these kind of internal reforms. And that's what happens with uh, charity groups if there is some uh, misspending of monies and so forth. You get rid of the uh, uh, offending parties. You institute uh, audit controls, which is what they were doing. But that apparently wasn't good enough because this attorney general vowed during her campaign to go after the NRA. She called them a terrorist organization. And it was clear uh, that they were going to do this, uh, uh, whatever the facts are. So uh, she's doing this clearly as a uh, political uh, vendetta. Even the former attorney general, Eric Schneiderman, uh, warned NRA that Democratic operatives and Cuomo were urging him to do the same thing, and he pushed back. Um, he didn't want to use the uh, death penalty, so to speak, for this. So it's clearly abuse of, of, of her powers, and I think they're going to uh, finally get to the bottom of this with this countersuit by NRA, which is suing them, New York, for uh, punitive damages, compensatory damages, violations of the First Amendment, and it's also being a violation of the Second Amendment because they want to shut down a pro-Second Amendment group. Uh, they're not uh, asking it to be reconstituted. Uh, they're asking it to shut down, and NRA can go to another state. So if they were really worried about that this uh, entity, the NRA, is a bad organization, they would have it reformed as they were doing rather than uh, putting in its head on the chopping block as they're trying to do. I don't think they're going to get away with it. So you don't think they'll get away with it because there's no legal basis to do it or because maybe they leave town if they went and domiciled yeah. in another state? Well, because they're, they're kind of headquartered in Washington, D.C., as it is, but originally chartered, as I understand it, in, in New York. If they left town, uh, does she no longer have standing? Well, no, she's got standing, so to speak, because right now uh, they're chartered in New York, and they have been, and their headquarters is actually in, in, in Virginia, a suburb right, right. of D.C. Uh, but in any event, um, she can continue with this, but if, in fact, if the court finds that she's doing this for selective prosecution reasons, that her motivations are unlawful, then she will not be able to do this. Uh, so it's a matter of how the court handles both these cases. One, the case that she brought, and two, the countersuit bought by the NRA. I think she's overplaying her hand. Uh, I, I think this is clearly a political stunt uh, to uh, fulfill a campaign promise that she made uh, when she ran uh, for that open office. And even the New York Times didn't even want to endorse her because of some alleged corruption she had with Cuomo. Uh, so this is a campaign promise he wants to make. It's purely political, uh, and, and, and she's not really helping the NRA uh, contributors by having them shut down because yeah. they take have advantages of uh, having this uh, organization in their corner and voice their views on the Second Amendment with respect to 
people running for political office. Yeah, and, and there are five million members, and even if there's some there there as far as how the money's being spent, that doesn't mean those other people don't want to be represented in Washington. Now, President Trump says a lawsuit, it's another reminder to voters, is why they should reelect him in November. He wrote on Twitter, just like radical left New York is trying to destroy the NRA, if Biden becomes president, your great Second Amendment doesn't have a chance. Your guns will be taken away immediately and without notice, no police, no guns. Now, Obviously, he's saying that politically. Um, don't know if there's a legal basis uh, for that to actually happen. But this does seem the timing. I, I don't care if you're pro-NRA or anti-NRA. It's clearly timed for a particular purpose. Yes. No, you're absolutely right, Bob. It, it is timed this way. They've been investigating this uh, for at least her office for uh, a year and a half. And along the way, they could have uh, brought some of these actions earlier, or as they were doing, uh, asking for information from the NRA. They were giving them, uh, cooperating, giving them the uh, documents that they needed, et cetera. And all along, they could have settled uh, with this uh, organization, as they've done with other organizations. But, you know, they went after uh, the Trump uh, Foundation. They shut that one down. And now they're going after the NRA, but I don't think they're going to. But with the Trump Foundation, there was a settlement that they would no longer do right. any business. Right. Which they weren't doing much of anyway. Anyway, but it's clear that they're going after uh, uh, conservative groups. I don't see them going after groups like Planned Parenthood and so forth, which also has lavish salaries for their CEO and so forth. So it's a matter yeah. that they're, uh, in my view, I think they're picking on conservative groups that they politically don't like. Yeah, and what bothers me is you've got five million members. You get rid of the whole organization, it doesn't seem to make sense. Even if some at the top may have done something that even some of the members don't like, that seems to be excessive. So, Paul, thank you so much for joining us, Paul Kaminar there. Coming back, we'll be more with... I have more.